but um, I'm going I'm to stay aggressive. I'm not going to change who I am, but I can just, you know, protect it better. This NFL thing isn't, it's hard. You know, when it, these teams are good, it's a battle every single week. And, you know, you're, you're playing a divisional game. You got to, when you cross the 50 yard line, get into the red zone, you got to be able to, um, you know, get seven instead of three. Uh, we, 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 we didn't, we didn't, we didn't give enough, ourselves enough opportunities to do that. I feel like we took another step tonight. Uh, I mean, I'm going to have to still go back and watch film um, to, to see how we really did. But uh, otherwise, I feel like we did a good job taking the ball away, um, trying to control the game. Just like that last stretch, we got to just do a better job of taking care of the ball and uh, doing a better job of taking the ball away and um, putting our offense in a better position to uh, make plays. Yep. And they didn't do that. But, hi, Jane Slater. Let's talk the Cowboys side of things here first. Uh, there were some signs of life there, potentially, from that defense. And I know what the record says, but it's still the NFC East, so maybe those signs of life pay dividends as we move forward, and they very much hang in this. Look, Mike McCarthy's been telling us that this is a process all along, and there has to be a buy-in. And you heard Demarcus Lawrence say it there. There at least seemed to be that last night. Again, you don't have a lot of moral victories in football, but I think seeing the signs of life, seeing the energy, uh, seeing these guys make plays finally, I think is something that even though two and six isn't worthy of applause, it gives you something to build on. Now, of course, we saw more of Randy Gregory last night, Antoine Woods with the departure of Everson Griffin and Don Terry Poe. And the biggest thing was the takeaways. They were one of the league's worst heading into this game, only three through seven games. Last night, there were four. And of course, it was Trayvon Diggs, the rookie, who's had a lot of time on some of these low light reels this year because he's been getting some of the tougher assignments. He was part of those uh, those two takeaways. So, look, after the game, Mike McCarthy said this is a sort of brand of football they want. This is the identity they want. It seems like things, at least on the defensive side of the ball, are trending in a better direction. Maybe not the best direction, but a better direction. And that's good for this team moving forward, especially when you consider you've got the Steelers coming to town. I was rooting for Ben DiNucci last night. Maybe it's a, you know, as a native Virginian, a James Madison thing. I, I, I don't know. He had his moments Clearly not enough. He said this NFL thing is hard. But I think the headline that jumps out is, since Dak got injured here, Jane, 36 offensive drives, one touchdown. Yeah, we. it's hard not to like Ben DiNucci. You hear him in the presser and with the very honest admission, look, this NFL thing is hard. I think a lot of people around here just wanted something to believe in. So the thought process was it can't get any worse. Throw in the seventh rounder, uh, the, the kid Ben DiNucci. Look, he had a lot of confidence, a lot of moxie. I think the trend that we're seeing with both him and Andy Dalton is simply holding the ball too long with this offensive line that has literally fallen apart this season. It was good that they were able to get Zach Martin back in there, but you still got Andy Dalton in concussion protocol, so we'll see who is going to get the start this weekend against the Steelers. But, yeah, I mean, this thing has been tough in the absence of Dak Prescott. In fact, it was my producer, Bobby Belt, who made this observation, made its way around the Internet last night. Worth noting, he said that Dak Prescott scored more points in the fourth quarter of his last full start against the Browns than the backups have now done in his absence. So I think the hope is that maybe you're – you, you find some semblance of, of this thing beginning to trend in a better direction, but they are having a hard time putting points on the board. And while it's great that you're seeing this defense step up, you still have got some problems scoring points in the end zone. Uh, yeah, and as you said, Ben DiNucci's hometown team, the Steelers, coming to town. Okay. Thank you, Jane Slater there with the Cowboys, who are very much in this because it is the NFC East. The um how were you kind of feeling after that moment? Um, tight game the whole way and to have just sort of one fundamental problem at the end. Any, any, can you share sort of where your emotions were at? How do you think we felt, Henry? I still am, am jeopardizing this team's success because of my lackluster performances of protecting the football. So, you know, Coach, trust me with the ball in my hands, and I wouldn't want it any other way, and I just got to do a better job with protecting it. So here are the offensive numbers, and they're pretty grim here for the Patriots. 19.4 points a game. That is the worst that they have put up in 20 
years. And here's another one for Cam Newton. And remember, he did miss a couple of games there, had the COVID-19 diagnosis. Two touchdown passes among the 32. Hi there, Mike Giardi, qualified quarterbacks here on that list. That is the fewest touchdown passes. He still almost pulled it off. I mean, they're in the red zone there. Uh, imagine the flip side of this if, if he gets in, if they go there as an underman team and they beat the Bills. I mean, it's just one play. It is a roller coaster with this guy in this offense. Yeah, it certainly is. And it was really kind of a tale of two halves, Andrew, for, for Cam Newton. And the way the game was called and managed for him, and if you kind of watch that first half, a lot of head-scratching calls, I think, especially on third down, third and eight, you run the ball. On the first drive, third and four, you run the ball. That's not really kind of how the Patriots have played, obviously, for the last 20 years. But that's not even how they played maybe the first couple of weeks with Cam. So, to me, it spoke to uh, trying to nurture this guy and get him back to a competent level of quarterback play, which is something that clearly he had not given them in the first two weeks and didn't really give them in the first half. And then in the second half, you started to see some of those calls maybe or some of the safe plays sort of build his confidence and then all of a sudden for the first time in a long time a month basically they became a good offense and they were moving the football down the field and as you mentioned on that last drive with opportunities but again cam picks it in our an opportune time to put the ball on the ground and he said he's a predominantly right-handed guy so he wants it in his right hand well any coach will tell you left sideline left hand right sideline right hand never mind the fact that it wasn't high and tight just Honestly, it just can't happen, and he knows it, and they know it, and it's a far cry, third, three and four, beating the Bills and only being a game and a half back to now being three and a half back at two and five. Yeah, imagine that. If they win and they get him again in Foxborough later in the season, this, this division feels a lot different. But Buffalo did win. Buffalo is six and two. McDermott does get his first one over Bill Belichick, and the Bills are in the driver's seat here. And part of the reason was they finally ran the ball yesterday yeah zach moss this is the guy they thought they were getting and they wanted to change their run game we saw that yesterday well you can quibble with some of the things that the bills did yesterday in terms of their game plan and execution but their run offense is certainly not one of those things they looked at how the patriots have played against the run basically all season long and said we can shove it down their throat and that's pretty much what they did the entire game and you had to love moss the more touches he got sort of becoming more physical, finishing his runs, and just his confidence certainly growing. Um, that's a team that said, you know, look, in the preseason, it was all about we have to beat the Patriots. The AFC East goes to the Patriots. Of course, in the week leading up to the game, Andrew, it was like, well, you know, it's just one game, and, and we're trying to win one game. So there's sort of a mixed message thing coming from the Buffalo Bills, but clearly finally getting a win. And you, you, Jerry here.